Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be another trying to fix video. Now this video is like a continuation of one that I did before because this switch here has already been repaired. This was the one that had the really bad bend on it that happened when somebody uh, I think suffered some rage and uh, I managed to straighten it out. It's not perfect but it's nearly there. You can still see that this back bit here is ever so slightly bent and more importantly the motherboard in the inside is a little bit bent. Now if you remember if you've seen that video this was the one on the second Nintendo Switch that I fixed. The problem with it is is that it doesn't dock so if you look at my good switch when I plug it into for example this one here you will see that after a few seconds it will come up onto the TV there we go but yet when I use this one here although everything works perfectly on it when I go to dock it it doesn't dock the screen goes out the green light comes on here but nothing gets displayed on the TV now there's a few interesting things that I've noticed on this one when you go to TV output it doesn't list the whole range it only lists auto or 480p so that's what this video is going to be about so to begin with i'm going to be basically just trying it in numerous different switches you know with different power supplies hdmi cables and then we're just going to be trying different things i've also got things like a hdmi splitter here uh, in case there's a problem with hdcp so just in case there's some issue with it because it looks like it is working it's just for some reason not displaying now, on that last video, a few of you have been very helpful and you've given your idea about what it could be. And most of you are saying that when the motherboard was bent, that maybe this USB-C connector at the bottom got slightly bent and maybe one of the data pins has come away from the board. In which case then, it will charge fine and this does charge fine because as you can see, it's like 93%. And when I plug it in, let me just quickly show you, it still charges fine. I'll just show you that. There you go, you can see it's charging. Okay, but what you said is uh, one of the pins that deal with, for example, the uh, HDMI out, then uh, one of the high speed data pins might be broken. But this is the thing which is concerning me. If, for example, you go to my good switch, this is my good one, watch this. If I go to TV resolution, so under TV output, under settings, if you go to TV resolution, you can see it gives me all these options, 480p, 720p, and 1080p. But now check this out. See, if it was a problem with one of the data pins lifting from the board, then it should display, still display those settings. But if I go here, look at this. The only options I've got is automatic or 480p. There is no other options. Everything else looks to be the same, but it only gives me two options. Now that is really worrying because I would have said that is a software, you know, a software fault on it. But yeah, it is running the latest, uh, the latest firmware on it. So if I go to the very bottom and go to system and go to system update, it will say your system is up to date 5.10. And if I go to my working one here, system, System is up to 5.10. So they're running the same update. So I'm thinking that I don't know if it is going to be a problem with one of the pins lifting because how would the switch itself know if one of these pins was lifted on here? Or for example, if this port was slightly uh, faulty? Unless, I don't know, unless the two of them are shorted together or something, I can't see how whatever tells the switch to output to the TV would know if the solder connection here was bad. So what I'm worrying is, I'm, I'm worrying now thinking that it might be a problem with one of the chips or something. But anyway, that's what this video is going to be about. Am I confident about fixing this? No, not at all. Am I worried about it? Yes. And the reason is because this switch is absolutely perfect. Well, sorry, it's not perfect. It's got a bend here. But, uh, you know, I could easily replace the case and then it would be perfect. And it does everything perfectly apart from dock into the TV and I know if I keep messing around with this and taking it apart and trying to do different things the chances are that I'm then going to break this switch and that's what kind of annoys me about this because yes I'd like to get it working but to me there's quite a lot of risk involved right okay so now I just want to show you that the TV can output all the different ones so if we go onto my good switch this is my good one TV output let's go to uh, 480p when I dock it here you will see that the screen will be very small up there and if I press OK OK, well sorry, the TV's not, uh, the screen's not small but if I press OK you can see that it comes up there 480p, Let's see if you can see that 
Right, I'm just going to focus in there just for a minute so you can see the different ones. Yep, yeah, 4 ATP. And now if I go to here and go to 720p, again you will see it will come up here as 720p. Yep, yeah. and obviously if I go to uh, 1080p, or let's just go to automatic. Automatic. Down the bottom, 1080p. Right, okay, let me come out of that now so you get the bigger picture again. Right, okay, so obviously some of you might be thinking it might be the power supply, it might be the HDMI cable, it might be the dock. So here I've got a completely different HDMI cable and uh, a different power supply on that one going into a different input on the TV. So on this one here, let me just show you the faulty one. TV output, I'm going to go to, right, is that automatic at the moment? And when I put it into here, You can see although everything's gone off here, green light's on, it's not coming up there. And I have left it for a good amount of time and it's still not working. Okay, should have done it by now. And now let's go to 480p. 480p. So you can see my t TV is capable of doing 480p, but it's, uh, it's not working. And now if I change the input of the TV to HDMI 2, which is gonna be this dock here, if I plug in this switch here, you will see it will come up. And also, let me do this switch here. This was the other one that I fixed, you know, with the broken Joy-Cons. That was the third switch that I fixed. This is also okay. Okay, you can see it up there. And if I was to go to the TV settings, let me just see what it's on here. TV outputs, automatic. Let's put this right the way down to 480p. You can see all the settings here again. 480p. And now if I do it there, yeah, you can see it's come up there. Strange that this comes up as a small and this comes up as a big. It must be to do with the uh, HDMI cable. But anyway, if you have a look there, you can see down the bottom it says 480p and you can see that the screen's tiny because it's only a 480p image. Right, okay, so uh, let's do this one on here now. So we're still at 480p. So that says to me that it is definitely the switch that's faulty. So I'm going to change that now to automatic. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to see if it's a HDCP issue, which is like, uh, uh, you know, content protection. So, for example, if you try to stream Netflix through your PlayStation 4 remote play, then it won't show. You will get the audio, but it would just be a black screen because it's uh, some sort of copyright uh, it's, you know, protection, something or other. Now, a way to get around that is to use something like a, a switch or something, and that apparently strips the signal. So I'm gonna try this one here, which is a splitter, and then afterwards I'm gonna try to switch, just to see if it makes any difference. So I'm going to go to HDMI 1. So basically what happens is out of this switch on the right hand side it goes into here. This splits the signal into two. So uh, let's plug this one in, see if it's working. Yep, there we go. So that's working. And yet when I do the bent switch, again it's not working. So it doesn't look like it's anything to do with HDCP. No? Right, I'm just going to quickly try this uh, HMI switch just in case there's some issue with this one. So I'm just going to do the same again, but using the switch. Okay, so it's in input number two, and again, nothing's displaying on the TV. Let's try this other switch. There we go, so that displays. It's 480p. Yeah, this one doesn't. I'm just going to try it on uh, the opposite one. So 480p or automatic, whatever it, whatever it's not on now. Okay, you can see what I've done there. Yeah, so nothing's happening there. And let's just change it to 480p. Right, 
Right, so you can see now that I've done enough testing to show that it is definitely the switch at full because no matter which switch we use here, they work fine on every single setup, but this one doesn't work. So what we're going to now do is take it apart and have a look at this motherboard to see what the issue is. When I took it apart last time, I did break the little uh, cable that I believe does the, the Bluetooth for the controllers, the little antenna cable, so that's just been taped down. But I can't see how that would cause any issue with the dock inside of it because that should be, you know, it should be irrelevant. Even if that's not working, it should still be able to dock. So, uh, well, I think it should anyway. The, the strange thing is, I'm just worried why it just says the 480p and the automatic. It's like the switch itself knows that it can't, that it's got a problem with outputting. I mean, why, why is it not there as 720 and 1080p? How does the switch know? that it can't do those resolutions. Uh, it's a really weird one. If you know the answer to that, please put it down into the comments. I did try to look on Reddit and stuff, and a lot of people were saying that since one of the firmware updates, people were having trouble where they couldn't get it out of 480p, but it's still docked. It just means they were having problems, you know, trying to get it in 720 or 1080. They didn't have the option. So it looks like it's a, you know, a software issue. But at least for them, it was still docking at 480p. Well, as you can see here, it's not docking at 480p, no matter what dock I use, no matter what power supply or HDMI cable, or when you knock that HDCP out of it as well, it's still not working. So let's take this apart now, and uh, we'll uh, come back to it now. I'll fast forward through it, and I'll come back to it when we've got the motherboard out, just to see if we can see anything obvious. And just in case you're wondering, I have tried it on the different RGB range as well. So full range, automatic and limited. So I've tried it on all of them and it doesn't make a difference. So let me put it to automatic now because I think it was on limited before. And you'll see that it still won't dock. Okay, now what I haven't tried, I haven't actually tried wiggling around the place. There's very little room to be able to move this. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my portable charger uh, my portable dock, because that will allow me to wiggle it around more. So let me quickly set that up. Just wiggling it now. When I mean wiggle it, I mean like putting pressure on it in different angles. Just to see if that no signal disappears from up there. No, let's try it the other way around. No, right, okay, time to take it apart. Okay, so I'm just gonna fast forward through the uh, dismantling because I've done it many times now in the videos. What I did learn, you guys told me that to get into the back, you don't have to undo all the screws here. I think it was just the middle one you have to undo. So that's that's great. I thought you had to undo every single one to get into the back. I thought you had to take off the Joy-Con rails, but uh, you don't. Apparently, you just need to undo the middle screw, which is really helpful. Right, first things first, I'm going to disconnect the battery. And now we're going to undo everything to get the motherboard out. Okay, so we've got the board out. I managed to keep the fan in place and the speakers and stuff like that and the battery as well. So I'm just going to concentrate now on this board, see if we can see anything obvious. Now this is where it's kinked up from this port point here you can see that it goes along and then it's uh, it's going upwards so I need to really have a look around this area here to see if there's anything that I can see so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go really close in and let you guys have a look so I'm just going to change this to macro right so I've zoomed right in now so you can have a close look because a lot of you will be interested you might be able to see what the fault is from uh, you know just from looking at the board because I've Obviously, a lot of you are going to know a lot more than what I know. So first of all, let me show you the inside of the port. I 
obviously you can pause it when you find something interesting and have a good look at it. Right now I'm just going to work my way around the board. See a lot of you are going to think that there's a bad joint there. These pins here. I'm going to use a torch later on to have a look at a look around it. See that's what I was saying earlier, if there was a bad joint there, then uh, surely the switch wouldn't know because I'm thinking that there's no like components between here, I could be wrong, but I thought there was no components between here and the pins here, it's just a way of changing these into something that we can just plug in, but of course I might be wrong. Alright, let me, uh, I'm going to leave these big uh, heat shield things on, at the moment anyway. I've never looked underneath them to see what's uh, what's there. I know that's where the chips are, but all that mess there was the uh, the outer ring thing that came off. That's why I had to put blue tack there to try and stay up, to keep it on. You can see the mess I've made with my soldering iron as well. Looks really bad when you look at it close up. That's what it should like. That that connector up here should look similar to that one. Right, let's spin it over and show you the other side. Right again. Let's start by the uh, the kink down the bottom. I have to have a close look in there at those pins there to make sure that they're all where they should be. Also I need to find out uh, what different pins do because remember these are reversible so they're the same on both sides so for example that pin there will be the same as underneath that pin there and that's the reason you can plug it in both ways. Well normally on USB-C you can do that. I'm thinking Nintendo will... Do you know what? Maybe Nintendo's not the same because when you put this into the dock you have to put it in with the screen facing you so maybe although it's the shape of a USB-C Maybe the pins are not reversible. See, that's going to be on the bend as well, this chip, so maybe it's something on that there. And also, that chip's on the bend. Well, not really. I suppose if you look, the bend's going to be here, so I suppose these chips are just off it. The bends are going to be around this bit here. This is where it looks like it's bent. Apologies if this is boring, it's just that a lot of you will like to see close up the board, see if you can spot the fault. Right, okay, now that you've had a good look at it, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a good look at it using a torch and see if I can see anything with my own eye because it's a little bit uh, hard when I'm looking through the lens of the camera. Alright, I'll come back to this in a bit. Okay, so I've been having a good look at this now and I can't see anything wrong with my eyes. What I did notice was that the bend doesn't just start here and go across. If you like look closely at it, it looks like the bend starts here. So unfortunately that means it is going to go through two chips here and also this, I believe, this power chip here as well. So annoyingly, it actually goes through quite a few components. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because it's just displaying in 480, well, it's not displaying at all on the dock, but remember the TV output is only saying 480p. So that leads me to believe that it's not a problem with the pins on this connector here. I mean, there might also be problems on here, but I think because the dock's not recognizing it, I would say it's a problem with a chip. Now, I could be completely wrong, but I believe that this one here is an audio chip, so that's probably to do with like the headphone and uh, you know like the speakers and stuff. I believe that this one here, because this I think was the problem with the brick switch, I believe this is to do with the power, but this also I think controls the output to the TV as well. I remember reading that before. And this one here is an audio visual chip. So I think it could be a problem with this chip here. I mean really it could be this one or this one, but I think this is more to do with power. But I definitely read that that controls the uh, something to do with HDMI out as well. So uh, maybe I could try reflowing them. The problem is, you know, again, not knowing what I'm doing, then uh, I could end up breaking this. And at the moment, it's a perfectly working switch in portable mode. But before I do any of that, because obviously that's risky, what I'm going to do is just to make sure. I'm I'm pretty sure it's got nothing to do with the pins here, but the bend is definitely you know going across this port and a lot of you mentioned that you think it's going to be a, a data pin problem on here. I am going to sacrifice a USB-C lead so I'm, I'm hoping that these are standard and that all the pins are connected not like the SCART connections years ago where some had less wires than others. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to cut the wire here, strip them all back and hopefully in there, I haven't counted how many pins there are but let's just pretend there's 15 at the top, 15 at the bottom, I don't know because I haven't looked it up. I'm hoping there's going to be 30 wires in here and then I'm going to, uh, and this is just 15 wires and it's just mirrored. I'm not sure because remember these work both ways so one set must be the same as the other set. I'm not sure if it means that there's more wires or whether it's just basically uh, in here whether they're, they're just crossing over to get each of the pins so for example pin 16 will be the same as pin 1 pin 1 here will be the same as pin 16 etc but anyway I'm going to cut it strip it back and then I'm going to test for continuity between the actual cut wire here and then each of the pins here so each of the pins here and also the pins here because it looks like there's two lots of connections here these ones here which is where my nail is and then these ones here which is where my nail is and can you see they're a few millimeters above each other so one must be for the top set and one must be for the the bottom connectors so the top and bottom connectors just to see because then for example if we haven't got the continuity on a couple of or even just one of the pins that might be why and maybe i'll be able to just tap my soldering iron on that particular pin or maybe when it comes to in here I could give it a blast with the hot air and that might make the solder flow again onto that bit so I'll be, I'm quite happy to cut this back sacrificely just to see if it does show anything up. I don't think it's going to be, I believe this is a problem with the chips but I think it's worth the risk. So that's what I'm going to do now. Well, it looks like that was a waste because there's not uh, there's not enough wires here, is there? One, two, three, four, five. I was expecting to see a whole load of wires in there because of all the pins. All right, so I think I've just wasted that lead there, which is which is weird. Maybe I need to read up about it. But why would you have so many pins with only uh, five wires? Do you know what? I'm gonna uh, before I rip open another lead. I don't even know if I have another lead. But uh, before I rip open another lead, I'm going to Google it just to see how many, what's you know, the pin out for a USB-C connector, just to see, uh, just to see what's what. So I think this one here must have just been some kind of USB-C dedicated charging cable because all the wires are pretty thick, and also there's just not enough of them. It doesn't look like there's any data wires in there. They all look like they're for charging. So uh, what I've done is I've just looked up on Wikipedia, and if you have a look, it looks like. So basically this is the one we would be looking at as far as the, 
the cable is concerned, the bottom one here, and it looks like there's 12 connections at the top and 12 at the bottom. So that's gonna be 24 in total. Now I have found this one here, where I was trying to do something years ago, so I should have just grabbed this one to begin with, but I didn't realize I had it. That's why I had to sacrifice the other lead. But uh, if you have a look here now, can you see that there's two fatter wires, the, the red and the black, so I presume they must be to do with some sort of charging. And then there's loads of smaller ones as well. And in each of the little braids here, you know, each of the little separate shielded ones, I've just untwisted this one and I can see that there's basically two smaller wires and also a ground as well. And if I was to put my multimeter to continuity, then if I was to do, for example, that one there and then go on to the ground, so for example, the braid there, but also the braid on the inside here, that's also ground. So it looks like in each of these little wrappers, you have two wires and also a braid. Some of the wrappers look even thicker again, so I'm not sure if they're thicker wires or whether there's more wires in there. So I'm just gonna have a quick look in there now, in this one, just to see what there is. Okay, so even the thicker ones, they're, they're not actually thicker. There's still two small wires with a braid as well. So it looks like in each of these little bundles, they're twisted pair. So I would think think you know similar to telephone and data wires that the twisted pair is so uh, you don't like get interference and stuff between the different pairs so what I'm thinking is what I'd like to find is that when I put these onto my board here I'm hoping that maybe one of the two of the wires are not making a contact in which case and it would be great if it was just a uh, one of the pins or the pads or whatever had lifted because then I could apply a bit of heat. But I don't really know if I'm going to find that. Also, I haven't counted 24 wires here. So I've got two here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then in each of the bundle, I've got two. So that's 10, 12, 14, 16. But then maybe they're counting the braids as well as separate uh, wires. I'm not sure, like the ground. Uh, or maybe this wasn't made with all the wires connected. Maybe the Nintendo Switch doesn't use every single one of the wires. I really don't know because I don't know anything about USB-C. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug that into the bottom here and then I'm going to work my way along and test out the different ones. And then what I might do is I might then turn it over and do it again just to see if it makes any difference. Right, so that's what I'm going to be working on. So first things first, let's just check here. Yeah, so I'm going to go across the braid and here. Okay. So the ground's definitely working. Interesting. One wire picks up. So I'm on the red wire now, the thicker wire, which I, I'm thinking is to do with the charge, and I could be wrong, but it's picking it up here. Here. And also here as well. Now I'm just going to flip it over and see if it's coming up on the same two. Yeah, it appears to be. Right, I'm also now gonna go on the other side and see what happens. Yeah, it seems to be in the same place. Now, I'm not writing each of these down. I'm just gonna go across, because I'm not really trying to prove what each wire does. I just want to see which ones don't make any continuity. So I'm going to fast forward through the rest of it now. I'm just going to be doing a similar thing to each of the wires. Now I've done the black wire here and it's going to go into ground. Weird thing is when I, for example, go to ground here, it really comes up on loads of the pins. Next one, no, no, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 no, and yes again. So it looks like the ground's coming up everywhere. I, I don't know whether it's supposed to do that or whether uh, that's indicating a fault. I'm on the other side now. So yes, then no, no, yes, 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 no, no. Yes. 
So really, the ground seems to be coming up everywhere. But I, you know, I don't know. Maybe when uh, when it's all turned on, maybe that disappears. Haven't got a clue. So this is going to be a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a bit awkward to test, I think. When I go onto these smaller wires, so for example like the orange wire here, then what will happen is they will only have continuity on one side uh, depending on which way the connector's in. So the connector's in this side now and I've got continuity on the back of the board. There. Okay. But now if I do this side, there is no continuity. Okay. And then when I swap this over to put it in the other way around, that way around, then I will have continuity on the opposite side of the board. So I suppose that makes sense. There. And if I turn it around here, I won't have continuity. Okay, so it looks like some of the wires work on both sides and then the smaller ones only work on one side. haircut because I don't want them to short against each other just uh, because then I might not get a true reading. Okay so I'm on my last one now and so far they've all got continuity which is actually a bad thing because it means unless this last one's faulty then uh, it must be a chip or a trace or something like that because remember I'm only going on to the solder connections here I'm not going further right, so I've just got to do the green one yep so now spin that round and do the green on the other side There we go. So it's not, I mean, I haven't actually written it down and made sure that each of these are going to each individual pin. I'm only checking for continuity. So for example, in theory, it could be a short in here and it would still have continuity because let's say if pin four here might be going to pin four and five here instead of just to pin four, for example. Uh, but that would be a little bit awkward to do just because it's so small in here. I would be able to do it. It's just that, you know, using the wires here might be a little bit on the big side. As well as that, I'm not convinced that it is a problem with the port here. Hence the reason I'm not spending absolutely ages on it. So 100% uh, in my opinion, they haven't lifted because if these pins have lifted or these pins have lifted, then I wouldn't have continuity uh, unless like I said before, unless there was a short in there, but I think it's unlikely. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking if it was bent, it's more likely to lift rather than actually the two pins stick together. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to apply a bit of heat. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to this chip here, and then I'm going to apply just a little bit of heat just to see if it makes a difference. Uh, I don't really know what else to what else to do. There doesn't seem to be much information on the internet. I can't see anything obvious with the pins, you know, lifting from the board like I showed you earlier. It all seems to be pretty solid on there. Uh, but that's that's what I'll do. I'm just sort of clutching at straws now because I thought it would have been a, a break in one of the connectors there, but I don't think it is. So I'm going to heat it up here. I might apply a little bit of I might apply a little bit of heat here see if it does anything and uh, I think realistically unless you lot have any ideas I think I'm just going to have to put it in and just settle for a switch that's portable only and then maybe in the future somebody who knows a lot more about this might definitely prove the fault onto here even you guys watching this video now you might be like Vince it's so obvious if it's only showing auto and 480 it means that the chip isn't doing its job properly because it's not allowing the switch to do 720 and 1080 so uh, you know if I find out that it's definitely this chip at fault then I have got a brick switch that I can actually take the chip off. I'm not saying I will be able to do it, but this is the one that I mucked up before, remember with the uh, the brick switch. So on the other side of this, there will be a uh, there will be a uh, a chip the same as that. 
the audio visual chip and in which case then it you know it might be possible as i get better in the future if i get better that i might be able to take this one off and put the other one on but again would a, you know would a very slight bend in the board actually break the chip i can understand it lifting one of the pins if the bend was severe but if you have a look at it here you can see that the bend kind of starts can you see it starts about here so it's kind of bending off in this way so again it could be could be an issue with this but i think that's just to do with the audio so i mean maybe it has broken i don't know i'll apply a bit of heat and i'll see what uh, i'll see what happens okay so i've got this on a little tray here i'm going to apply a little bit of flux to the actual chip and i'm not going to tape off the surrounding area i know you guys have been really helpful you've told me about the tape to use i need to order some up i believe it's called a captain or captain tape uh, you can get it on ebay really cheaply normally i would put foil everywhere to you know shield the rest of the components but i actually want to kind of heat this bit and the uh, components around it as well i'm not going to go crazy i'm only just going to give it a little bit of heat for a while just to see if it makes a, any difference because like i said you know i, I really don't want to break this uh, break this board so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using this pen flux apparently you can get paste flux which is better so uh, this is the only one i've got that's the reason i'm using it but i will buy some paint uh, paste flux as well and uh, the temperature i'm going to use is let's turn it on and uh, I'm going to put it up to I think about I think I'm going to do it at 340 and see how we go with that Air, I'm going to put it around about 4 as I said you know I don't know I still don't know I still need to do more learning I'm just going to heat it up just to see uh, see what happens right okay so I'm just going to apply flux everywhere Or when I say everywhere around the chip so there's plenty of flux on that now and let me put a little bit in here as well just to see I'm sure there is no problem with the contacts there but we'll just give it a little heat up everywhere right okay so I'm going to zoom right in now actually I'm going to use the the macro feature of this Right, okay, so uh, I'm zoomed right in now. You can see all the flux uh, around it. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Keeping the air low because I don't want to blow all those small components off the board. Right, okay. I'll let it cool down and see if it makes any difference at all. It probably hasn't. I wasn't even looking through the lens there, so I don't know whether any of the solder would have heated up sufficiently or not there. But uh, who knows? I can definitely feel the heat coming off it. So I'll let it cool down and then, uh, then we'll see. What I'll also do is while I'm here, I will just flip the board over and I'm just going to do the other side of this USB-C connector. I'm sure it's got nothing to do with that, but I might as well do it while I've, uh, you know, while I've got the equipment out. Right, now I'm just going to add some flux to this side here and just heat this up here. Right, I presume when I do this that that little water indicator might end up uh, burning or coming off, but let's see. See the bubbling there is just uh, the flux I think burning off. Right, 
Right, I'm just going to leave it at there. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the old uh, the, the, the flux now. So I'm going to clean round here. I haven't got the proper stuff to clean, so what I'm going to use is I've just got some cotton pads and I'm just going to use some uh, surgical spirit, which is the same as rubbing alcohol. And I'm hoping that that will get all the old, uh, you know, the, the sort of burnt flux residue and stuff off. Well, it seems to have pulled some stuff off anyway. If you look, it does look a little bit yellow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together now once it's uh, fully dried and cooled down. And then I'm going to see if it's made a difference. I'm not hopeful. If I'm honest with you, I don't think it's going to have made a blind bit of difference. But at least now, by doing a video, hopefully people watching this will have more information. And then they'll share it, and then they will help me, and not just me, but anybody else having this problem in the future. So if you know what the issue is, then uh, please put it down in the comments. Right, OK, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, put it all back together, and then you will see it either working or not working in the next step. Right, okay, I've just temporarily put it back together. I'm leaving the, the heat sink off it, the speakers are disconnected, even the Joy-Cons, the antennas are disconnected because I just want to see, basically, if it works and whether it will dock or not. I'm hoping you don't have to connect everything to make it dock. Now, what I've done is I've only put one screw in the motherboard so you can see how much it's bent. If you have a look here, can you see it bends there? Not only there, but this side here. So I'm leaving it the shape that it kind of wants to be, just to see if it makes a difference. And then, for example, if it works, I can bit by bit tighten the screws to see if it stops working. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in this uh, battery. Right, okay, let's turn it on and see what happens. Actually, do you know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to put the back on, because I don't want anything to damage as it's, uh, don't want anything to get damaged as it goes into the dock. Okay, first we'll just turn it on, see if it comes on. Uh oh. Hold on a minute. Make sure I've got everything connected. That needs to be connected. I'm pretty sure I have. This is slightly worrying. Let's plug the charger in and see what it does. Nothing. Right, okay, I'm going to put it completely back together like it should be, because this is uh, this is weird, I wasn't expecting that. Now I am really worried. Right, so uh, I'm going to put all the Joy-Con bits in, speakers in, put the metal rail on the back, and then see what happens. I can't see how that would actually make it, uh, make it work, but uh, who knows? Ah, uh, do you know what I forgot? I forgot the, uh, I forgot the little connector that does the power to the LCD. I presume this one at the bottom does the connector to the LCD. This one here. 
I forgot to connect, uh, I forgot to connect that one. Right, okay, let me do that now and we'll try it again. Right, let's try it again now. There we go. Oh, I was worried there for a minute. Excellent, it's gone out. Right, I've got, I haven't got the speakers plugged in, that's why it's not doing that. Right, let's go to uh, system settings now and see if TV output's different. No, still just a two of them. Right, okay. Uh, okay, let's plug it in and see what happens. If I'm careful, I should be able to put it in the dock without... Uh, actually, I haven't got the SD card reader in. Maybe that needs to be in. Right, let me turn this off. when we plug it in. All right, it's gone off, green lights come on. Still not coming on the TV, so it hasn't made a blind bit of difference. Right, I, I think... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is... What should I do now? If I'm honest with you, I don't know what to do because I don't really know what chip is at fault. I don't really know what the fault is. There's absolutely no info, as far as I can see online, about this problem. And I don't want to break the switch just for the sake of the fact that it doesn't dock, especially when I've got no info to go on. Obviously, if there's like hundreds of these faults reported and everybody says this particular chip, then I would chance it. But I don't see the point of you know taking off a chip off my uh, brick switch to put onto here when I don't really know which one it is. So I think, unfortunately, I think this video is going to be left up in the air again. Hopefully, the suggestions that you guys give me will be able to you know make me go forward and be able to get this switch docked eventually. You know, I did try. I tried different docks. I tried the HDCP thing. I tried doing all the different resolutions. Uh, I tried heating it up, you know, I whether I did a proper reflow there, no, I don't think it was hot enough to actually reflow all the solder, but I did apply a fair bit of heat for a while and it didn't make any difference. Again, you've got to remember that I don't want to damage this switch. I was just heating up that chip without really knowing if that chip was to blame or not. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together just to show you that it is still working. I was contemplating putting the motherboard into my brick switch to have a nicer switch, but there's no point. If the switch is not working properly, I would rather have it kind of beat up in a portable mode. Uh, if it can't be docked, I don't want it to look perfect. I would rather save the brick switch for another faulty switch that I can buy, and then I can, you know, for example, use uh, the brick switch to have a switch that is perfect. Then, for example, this switch here is perfect. This is the one where I change the Joy-Cons and I use these off the brick switch. So I don't see the point of making the case for this one absolutely perfect when it doesn't dock because it's an inferior product anyway. So uh, let me put it back together and then I'll show you it working again at the end. Right, okay, I've only got to put the back plate back on and I was looking at this old foil one that was all bent up from the bent switch and I was looking at this nice new one from the brick switch and then I was thinking, you know what? I am doing this switch an in, in injustice because it is still a perfectly working switch, it just doesn't dock. But a lot of people play it in handheld mode anyway, so what's the point of me penny pinching and you know, like worrying about, for example, a dented one of these and a back plate when you can get all these for around about five pounds, four pounds, and you know, the front surround again, another four or five pounds, whatever it costs. So I think what I am going to do is I am going to put the motherboard from here into my brick switch. Because these components, like you know, this front surrounds here with the super glue that's all gone bad here, it makes the switch look really bad. When in fact, it's not bad. The screen and everything 
is perfect on it and on the brick switch the screen looks perfect so what's the point of me doing this I might as well make one nice switch yes it can't be docked at least it will still be nice to play in handheld mode so I'm reversing now I'm going to take the motherboard back out of this put it into my brick switch and at least then it will look good even though it can't be docked right so I've got the new screen and everything that's not bent and the casing ready to go now I think what I'm going to try and do is because now I'm going to be using this casing, I now have a good connector on that little antenna again. So I think I am going to try, it's unlikely to work for me, but I think I am going to try and get this connector off here, this one here. And I think I'm going to try to put it onto the good motherboard. Remember this is the brick switch here, so that's what I'm going to, uh, that's what I'm going to try and do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mask everything off with foil and then I'm just going to leave this little bit exposed and I'm going to try to heat it up with the hot air gun and I'm going to just try to take it off and then if it does come off I'll try to put it on the new one. If it doesn't come off and I ruin it, I haven't really lost anything because this board here is no good to me now because it's got other damage on it from when I was trying to do different things with it. Right, okay. Right, so I'm just going to make a quick note of it on the camera there, so basically 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock are all connected to ground and then the central pins connected to this one here. So I'm going to cover it in foil and uh, hopefully I might be able to get it off. Right, so I've got everything covered in foil now and uh, as I say I haven't got the proper tape yet and I've just exposed that bit there. Right, so I'm going to put some flux on it. And I'm going to heat it up using the same settings as before. So I'm just going to do the 340 and then the airs at 4. I need to get some different tweezers. No, okay, right, I'm going to uh, whack the heat up, whack the air up, put some more flux on it. So I'm going to put the air up to 6. I'm going to put the heat up to 400. See how I do with that. The problem I've got is it keeps moving around the place. Really, I need to get something some kind of grips so uh, then I will be able to lift it off. Yes, it's off. Right, okay. Right, okay now. Sorry for the blurred image. Every time I go near it, it just uh, gets my hand instead. Right, it looks like it fell off onto the, the tray there, just next to it. Have a look. Just there. So I'm hoping I will be able to uh, do something with that because it doesn't actually look damaged on the, the board where it came off. I'm just going to let it cool down. And then I'm going to try to do the same on the uh, the good motherboard. Obviously now 
it's a lot more risky doing it on the go good motherboard because uh, because I don't want to muck anything up but I can clearly see now through the lens of the camera that this one up here is the central conductor one so I'm hoping I won't have to apply any more solder I'm thinking if I just put flux onto the old one that I'll be able to make it stick and uh, let me flip this thing over see if I've done any damage to the other side no that looks fine I think I might get away with that well I'm happy with the way that came off it took a lot longer than expected but what I'm not so sure about is how this next one's going to come off because this is a good motherboard so I'm going to do exactly the same again I'm going to take off the the foil uh, sorry cover it all in foil and then just expose this bit here this is there's not a huge amount of other things near it so it's kind of out there on its own so it's probably uh, one of the better things to practice on right I'm going to put that good connector over in the corner here and uh, we're going to do the same again now I'm going to keep on the same heat and hopefully I'll be able to remove this one here so I'm going to add some flux to it I think what I'm going to do is that uh, macro one might be a bit too close I'm just going to do it here and then you might be able to get a better look at it as I heat it up Right, so here we go. I think that's it. It's come off. Where has it come off? I'm not too sure. Something's come off. Yeah, that's it. It has come off. Look. Right, okay, so that's it there and uh, the bit that came off is a lot smaller because obviously it's missing it's missing a lot of it there you go it's that stump there right okay so now I can try to line up the good stuff and put it on there and hopefully it might stick so again I'm going to use some flux I'm hoping there's going to be enough uh, solder between the board here and the connector to allow me to do this. So remember now this is the side for the central pin that's a little bit here. All right, that's my connector here so I need to put the central conductor there. Okay you can see that bit there. Oh god, I think I've lost it. Oh, here it is. Well, it's so hard to see. When I look through the camera lens, it seems really easy, but then when I'm trying to line it up, it's really hard. And I don't know what it is, but normally I don't have a problem, but when I'm doing it with this, I, my hands seem to shake all over the place. that might be it. Let's have a look. Right, I'm looking through the lens of the camera now. It's definitely not far off, is it? Maybe it needs to come down a little bit. There we go. I think that might do. That might do it. Right, okay, so I'm going to apply uh, some heat and I'm going to go for the same heat and air. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it from I think I'm going to do it from higher up and try to direct it just straight down so I hope this doesn't block the camera but uh, 
probably will block the camera because I don't want to do it at an angle because it's just going to blow it away. So I'm going to start from high up and then work my way in. Right, we'll try that. Let it cool down just for a few seconds. So if it feels like it's stuck when I give it a little nudge with the tweezers, then I can use my multimeter and I can just check for the shield, you know, the ground, and also the central pin against this one here on this side. And it seems to be on there, but whether the solder's melted or not, I'm not too. Uh, I'm not too sure. Let's uh, let me take it out of the foil. And we'll give it a quick test. I'd be really happy if that does work. Even though the switch isn't uh, going to be using docked mode, then uh, you'll have more chance of having a, a good connection on tabletop mode. And more so, it's just a sort of achievement of uh, actually being able to replace something and it works. So let's see now. Right. Excellent. Well, all all of the grounds are working. Definitely. Now let me try that central pin. Well, first of all, I'm trying the central pin against the shield. The grounds not doing anything. Yay! Excellent! It's on there and it's doing what it's supposed to do. So I hope I haven't damaged anything else in the process. Now, what I'm going to do is, now that I've done that, my confidence has grown a bit. So I'm going to take off the thermal paste. And I did actually buy some thermal paste because uh, in one of my last videos it annoyed a lot of people that I didn't change the thermal paste. So I, I bought some of this. I'm hoping it's the correct stuff. Again, I've never used this before. I just got it on Amazon. Arctic MX2 Thermal Compound. And I'll have to do a little bit of reading up. Somebody was really helpful and they told me how to use this. I think it's just you put a kind of P-shaped amount just on it. And then when it presses down, it spreads out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up this bit here. Put a bit on there. And then I'm going to clean up a bit on the... Uh, the foil shield as well, clean up this, and then I'll put a blob on there as well, and hopefully, hopefully that will work. I'm not sure why you can't reuse this stuff, I, I presume it's because it gets a little bit, uh, maybe once it's been opened and stuff, maybe it dries out. So I've got to clean the flux off that connector there, haven't I? So I should be doing that now. I'm just using surgical spirit, which is uh, rubbing alcohol. I don't think it's the correct stuff. I need to read up. A lot of people have said what I need to use, but I haven't bought any of it yet. I'm hoping this is, stuff is similar. It's pretty good though. I'm really happy with that. Can't really tell with my eyes that it's been changed over. Looks nice and straight.
Right, so that's it clean there. So now I'm going to use the. Uh, I've got to clean up the little heat sink thing now. Probably more important to have this on when you're doing the the docked mode because then it's working harder when it's in 1080p. But I had my switch on holiday recently. I was in Mallorca and it was really, really warm. And then uh, my son was using it to play Fortnite with one of his friends that he met over there. And uh, then he came up to the the apartment and he was like, "Dad, Dad, the switch is on fire. It's making a, a funny noise." And I listened to it, and the fan—it wasn't on fire at all. It's just a fan. I've never heard it work so hard. It was—he was playing it in the sun, and it was already well into the 30s. And obviously, Fortnite might be slightly more demanding than other games. And uh, the the noise that the the fan was making was immense. And that was on my good working switch. I hope it's okay because it looks like it's blue on this side and this side looks pink. I hope they're not too different. That says to me that they're two different pastes. Do you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to I think I'm going to put the new thermal paste on here, but I think I'm going to leave this pink stuff on uh, on the actual shield or the new shield here. So because I'm not exactly sure if they're different or not. Again, if you know they're different, then uh, please add it down to the comments. I'm not sure if I can use this on both ends of it or not. Right, okay, so we're gonna be putting it back together now and then I will uh, stop when I get to the bit where I'm used doing the thermal paste. I just wanna show this bit because this is where I'm putting the connector on. So I'm gonna do the bottom connector first. This one was the one that was always okay. Okay, so that's gone in nice. Now I'm gonna do this top one. Oh, is that it? That's it. That's it, it's in. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Right, okay, let's do the rest. Right, okay, thermal paste time, so, uh, or thermal compound. Just having a look at this, it does look like there's little round dots on here, and I'm wondering if that means that that's, uh, each dot is the amount you apply. I'm not sure, or is it just purely to show you how much, do you know what, it's probably just to show you how much is left. Right, okay, I'm gonna, uh, put a blob in the middle on here so let me just zoom out so I'm going to put a blob here the size of a pea so I'm hoping that's enough and then that should just splurge out right okay uh, I'm thinking that this should just seal itself I'm hoping it doesn't go off because otherwise it will work out quite expensive. Okay, well it feels kind of nice. It definitely feels like it's you know moved outwards when you uh, when you put it on. Now because I took the Joy-Con rails off this one to fix my other switch, I'm going to have to make sure I take the Joy-Con rails off the bent switch and put them back onto here. Well, I can see it's oozed out on the side there, 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 and there. So I, I think that was probably the right amount to do. So now I need to do the, the Joy-Con rails. Okay, so that is everything back together now. I just need to pop the battery back in in a few minutes. And uh, then I need to put the foil on and the SD card reader, and then we're ready to test it. But if you have a look now, it looks nice now because that conductor's properly on there and uh, I've got new thermal paste on there. So I'm just going to reuse the pink stuff. Like I said earlier in the video, if you know what that's for, 
then uh, let me know if, for example, I can use the MK2 on that bit as well. I'm just a bit confused why the inner stuff was blue and the outer stuff's pink, so I'm just going to leave it with the pink stuff on the outer one. I, I, I presume that this is the most important one, the inside one anyway, because the outer one is just to disperse a bit of heat through here, while the, uh, the, the one that I've changed is to go up this heat sink here, which the fan blows, you know, the exhaust blows away. So I'm, I'm thinking that that is the most important one. Right, so I'm going to fully put it back together, clean it all up, and then we'll do the final test. Okay, so that's the back on now, and it does look much nicer with, with this uh, case on and also the foil as well. It just looks perfect. Also, I have a serial number. Right, okay, let's uh, pop the rear cover on. Right, okay, so we are done. Let's turn it on and let's see if it's going to work. Right, remember on this particular screen now, I never got past the Nintendo Switch boot up bit. So it would stick on this bit for ages, so uh, I don't know if the screen's definitely working. It appears to. Got 50% battery on it. Excellent. All right, just out of curiosity, we go to system settings and TV uh, output just to see what it's saying. No, exactly the same as before. Right, okay, so... Uh, just out of curiosity, I am going to connect it up to the TV again just to make sure it's not still not docking. There's no reason why it would have fixed itself. No, it's still saying no signal, and I just want to double check with my working switch. Yeah, okay, right, so it's definitely still not docking, but everything else appears to be working okay. Let me just see if that little connection's still working. I'm just going to move it a tiny bit of distance away. Right, okay, I'm not a huge amount of uh, distance from it, but uh, about six, six foot and uh, I've got my hands held above my head behind me and it's working fine. So uh, in tabletop mode it is going to work. So it looks like that little antenna connector that I did was successful. So believe it or not, I know it's a small victory, but I'm really happy that I've done that. And uh, I'm happy that I've changed the switch because it now looks nice. Let me just pop a game card in, make sure that the game's still working. So while that's loading up, you can just see how good it looks now. So although it doesn't dock, you can see that the casing on this one is perfect. So it does look like a perfect switch. It's just such a shame it doesn't dock. So if you know the reason why, please definitely add it down to the comments because you won't just be helping me. You'll be helping all the other people in the future watching this video as well. As far as I can see, I couldn't see anything online about it. If you've got a link to a website that you know is a uh, one second, let me just turn it off. Uh, if you know uh, that it's uh, that that's there's a forum or a discussion about it, again, add it down to the uh, add it down to the comments because I can't be the only one that's going to suffer from this problem. This problem will have to come about again in the in the future, or some of you might be experiencing it now already. So although I didn't get it working this time. I'm personally pleased because I've got that connector working and that's the first thing that I've actually done on a board that has been successful because remember I'm an amateur at this so uh, that's going to give me more confidence now to do things and it was in my opinion quite a small connector to do. Yes it was easier because there wasn't no components next to it but if you tape everything off using the tape that I mentioned that Captan tape or Capton whatever it's called then, uh, then I think it should be, you know, it should be doable even if there was, there was components next to it. Now, maybe I do need to reflow that chip better. You know, the one that you've seen, the, what is it, P, 
the, the P13 USB or whatever it was called and uh, then it might be working it's just that I was scared to do it because I don't know that it is that chip and then for me to go and you know reflow it properly I might end up putting too much heat on the chip and damaging it and it would be such a shame because this switch here is a perfectly usable switch to uh, you know for other people now uh, I at the moment do have two switches so maybe I might need to think about doing some sort of giveaway thing is I feel kind of bad giving this switch away because it doesn't dock but maybe I might get myself a, another switch and then if I can fix that one up then maybe I can think about giving it away the only problem I've got is I'm in the UK a lot of my viewers are in America and other parts of the world and I don't actually know how much it would cost UK is not a problem because I can do special delivery but I don't know how much it would cost to ship to the rest of the world so I need to look into that also I'd quite like to do something interesting for a giveaway instead of just like picking a name maybe we could do some kind of uh, I don't know some kind of quiz or something you know maybe I could do some weird connection where I connect up some weird controllers to a system and then that uh, you guys have to guess guess how it's done and if you guess correctly maybe then you could win the switch so if you've got ideas about how I could do some sort of giveaway then add it down to the comments maybe the the fairest way is just to do a random pick of someone or uh, I don't know I mean it'd be quite nice maybe if uh, if a younger person or somebody with not a lot of money was desperate for a switch then it would kind of be better to give it to them rather than give it to somebody that might already own a switch or have a playstation 4 or xbox or whatever but anyway all ideas add it down to the comments if you do have any ideas on how i could do that but uh yeah unfortunately i still can't get this one to work 100 percent. but we're getting there bit by bit it's certainly looking good now and uh, maybe there can be an update on this video if in the future one of you guys work out what's wrong with this. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, it does still charge. So if you look there, you can see it's charging everywhere when I plug it in. Okay, and the other way around. Okay. Hopefully this video is still of some kind of use to you. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more Fix-It videos and also how-to videos as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. Take care. Bye now.